Hi, it's Money44 here and today I would like to invite you to the review of the ICS CXP Mars 2 Carbine S3. The replica for the review was provided by ICS. After the success of the previous generations of the Mars series replicas, the time has come for their next installment in the form of Mars 2 and in two versions, the basic MOSFET and improved S3. Today we'll take a look at the improved S3, an example of the carbine model enriched with such elements as the E-Trigger System SSS3 or improved tuning parts by Master Mods. Besides that, in the replica you will also find a split gearbox known from ICS products, EBB system or spring release function. The Mars family also consists of a shorter Commodo Junior model and a longer DMR model. Except for the length of the barrel and the stock, these replicas do not differ in anything else. But returning to the carbine model, today we'll see of course how the replica is built and what functions it has, we'll see how to disassemble it and what performance it has. But as standard, we'll start with a small unboxing. In the colorful box with a transport handle you will find a card with key or code leading to the instruction manual, a simple catalog with ICS replicas, a TDN socket, two spare 25 ampere fuses, a wrench for unscrewing the front ring, cleaning rod, a high cap magazine, and of course the CXP Mars 2 Carbine S3 replica itself. Let's take a closer look at it. The replica has been with me on two games, so don't be surprised if you see some scratches. The replica measures 87cm with the stock collapse and 94.5cm with it fully extended. With an empty magazine and without a battery, the replica weighs about 3.2kg. The replica is made of high quality polymer, aluminium, its alloys and steel. The 13-inch CNC front is made from aluminium, as well as the blaster flash hider and the external barrel. The whole body and the manipulators as well as the stock guide are made of aluminium alloy, while polymer is used to make the iron sights, pistol grip and the stock. Steel elements apart from the pins and screws are also the inner flush slider and the rear sling mount. Going from the front of the replica, the first thing we encounter is the blaster flush hider. It consists of two elements. An external aluminium amplifier, after unscrewed which we find a clockwise thread in ASR standard, and an internal flush hider. The task of the blaster flash hider, or rather the amplifier, is to make the replica louder, and it actually passes the test. Just listen to the difference in sound with and without it. After unscrewing the Allen screw, we can unscrew the flash hider, which reveals a standard 40mm counterclockwise thread, allowing us to mount other accessories such as sound suppressors or tracer units. 13-inch M-lock front was made of aluminium in CNC technology. It gives us 6 mounting points at the bottom of the front, 5 on its sides, and 3 on the top. Additionally, the front has a short section of wrist rail on the front and at its end a slightly longer section passing smoothly into the wrist rail on the body. In the front you will also find a stabilizing element for the outer barrel, thanks to which the barrel sits rigidly. The element can be moved in a small distance, which makes it easier to mount M-Log accessories. The color of the front itself and its finish is different from the body, which makes it a stand a bit from the whole replica. Thanks to a strong slimming of the front, it's quite narrow, so there is no problem to comfortably grip it with whole hand, which gives us a very stable and comfortable grip. The replica has folding polymer iron sights in the form of a vertically adjustable front sight and a horizontally adjustable rear sight. The iron sights also have a low profile sight visible after folding, but due to the fact that the iron sights are very low, it's difficult to use them, no less is an interesting detail. The body of the replica is characterized by a very interesting and original design and ergonomics. It is decorated with a large logo of the CXP series with the inscription Mars 2. 
Above it we can find the embossed CXP inscription and above it the SSS3 marking, informing us what version of the replica we are dealing with. On the other side, in addition to information about the manufacturer, we can also find a sticker above the shell ejector window, warning us about the blowback system in operation. The replica is friendly for both right and left handed users, thanks to both Ambidextrous fire selector and magazine release. The charging handle is also ambidextrous. After pulling it back, the rotary style hop up chamber is accessible. Turning the knob down increases the power of the hop up, and turning it up decreases it. The ambidextrous fire selectors has at first glance a standard settings, but in reality, there is a bit more hidden under them. The first setting is, of course, safe. The next is single fire mode. Thanks to the small trigger function, under the full auto setting there are really two functions. If you press the trigger all the way down, you get a standard full auto. But if you lightly squeeze the trigger, you get a short free round burst. To use this function correctly, you need to practice, but you do not need to program anything else in the replica to use it. The last function that the fire selector hides is the spring release system. To use it, just set the selector in safe position and move it a little further until we hear that the spring has been released. This per length is live. The selector itself moves with resistance and clearly clicks into firing modes. Flat trigger has a fairly short stroke, and the shot itself happens more or less after exceeding half of the way of the trigger. However, pressing the trigger very quickly will not make it possible to shoot very fast in the semi. To take full advantage of this mode, you need to learn the rhythm when you can fire the next shot. In the replica, you will find a EBB system, which is an electronic blowback system, which it shot the dummy bolt bounces back a little. This is to simulate the action of a firearm, but rather only visually. Ergo polymer pistol grip is set on an angle of 20 degrees to improve ergonomics. The texture of the grip surface is very pronounced and provides a firm grip. In addition, the grip has a system of quick screwless access to the motor. Just push out the piece and you're done. On the back of the body you will find a steel double-sided eyelet for mounting a sling. The polymer ergo stock has a total of 5 length settings and push dot mounting system. To get inside the stock, simply push out the pin at its base and remove the buttstock. Here you will find the replica's wiring ending with a 25 ampere fuse and a TDS plug. It is worth noting that the wiring does not go through the middle of the stock guy but through the separate channel under it, which provides more space for the battery. The stock itself is one of the roomiest I've seen so far. There is no problem at all to fit a Lion Titan 11.1V 3000mAh battery or a Brick Nanotech 11.1V 1800mAh LiPo without losing the full stock setting. Another distinctive feature of the replica is the split gearbox. To get to it, just knock out the rear pin and pull it out as far as it will go. And then separate the house of the receiver. As you can see, the gearbox shell is divided into two parts. The lower one containing the trigger, electronics and gears, and the upper one in which you will find the entire pneumatic system. Thanks to this separation, working on the replica is much faster and easier. In the upper part of the shell, there is of course a quick spring change system. We only need a 4mm Allen key. With it, push the spring guide and turn it by 45 degrees, which allows to pull it out and quickly change the spring. This is probably one of the fastest systems I've seen so far. If changing the spring alone is not enough for you, there is nothing preventing you from having prepared for example a second gearbox set with a different configuration of pneumatics and quickly change it even just before the game. The fit of all the parts itself makes a very good impression. The only play you will find in the replica is the standard plate on the stock and play between the receiver halves. This play is often encountered in ICS replicas as it's caused by the split gearbox shell, or more precisely by the assurance that the halves will come together properly. I didn't even notice it during the game, however I would just like to point out that the same play can be found in real steel counterparts. And if it bothers you, it can be easily eliminated with the help of an o-ring placed on the front connection of the upper receiver. 
With the replica we get a high cap magazine for about 300 BBs. Its characteristic feature is the window through which you can see how much ammunition is left. The BBs are of course inserted from the top and the winding wheel is at the bottom. In the metal well it sets with a slight play to the sides. The replica is equipped with a SS3 system that controls its operation. In addition to the smart trigger function which I presented when discussing the fire selector, it has several additional functions. The first of them is pre-cocking. The system learns the position of the piston during the first 5 shots and then compresses the spring a bit after each shot, thanks to which the next shot comes much faster. This can be seen from the movement of the dummy bolt, as after the shot it is moved back a bit. The system works even on a weaker spring such as M90, and I have not noticed double shots. But if you need, the function can be deactivated, just fire a shot in semi mode and keep the trigger pressed, then switch the selector between semi and auto mode 5 times. The motor will whirl once, confirming the deactivation of the function. The same way you can turn it on again. If we will be bothered by the 3 shot burst in auto position, we can also turn it off. Just fire a shot in semi mode and keep the trigger pressed until the motor vibrates. The same way you can restart the function. The system also protects the battery from over-discharging. It will inform us of this by vibrating the motor three times. If the battery is discharged to the limit, the replica will stop shooting. The last function is diagnostics. I will not go into details, but it allows you to check whether the basic functions such as the operation of the trigger, selector and gear movement are working properly. The system returns to factory settings every time the battery is disconnected. The system in rest mode consumes about 5 mA, which is very little, but I do not recommend leaving the battery plugged in the replica for longer than the duration of the game. One more important thing, if you happen to separate the receiver hubs without releasing their spring first, it is possible that the gears will remain in the wrong position and closing the replica this way may be either impossible or may cause a malfunction. So always make sure that the gears are in this position before closing the replica. You can adjust them manually if necessary, of course after first unplugging the power supply. We know what the replica looks like from the outside and what functions it has, so it's time to look inside. I will start disassembling the replica by separating the receiver halves. For this purpose I knock out the rear pin, which as you can see does not come out completely. Now I can separate the receiver. I grab the charging handle and I can pull out the upper part of the gearbox shell, to which we will return shortly. In order to completely separate the receiver halves, I still have to knock out the front pin. To the lower receiver we will return in a moment. In order to pull out the barrel assembly together with the chamber, it is enough to pull it backwards. I didn't see the point of disassembling the front, so I'll put this part aside and we'll take a look at the barrel assembly with the chamber. The metal rotary style hop-up chamber has a standard spring that presses against the frame, and a standard barrel locking clip. I want to show you the knob from Master Mods mounted in the S3 version of the replica. In order to do this, I have to take the chamber apart. So I pull off the pin lock of the pressure arm, I knock out the pin, unscrew the knob lock, pull off the knob, and now I can pull off the arm and get to the knob. This hourglass shaped element from Master Mods is made of brass. This shape is supposed to make the backing more evenly pressed to the BB from all sides which is supposed to provide a more stable and repeatable BB flight. And from my experience I can say that it does its job. The bucking itself is made of medium hardness silicon and has a standard construction. It was lubricated quite heavily. The 375mm barrel is made of aluminium and it's finished in black. Plus it has an o-ring groove to stabilize it in the hop-up chamber. It is time for the lower receiver. I start by pulling off the stock. All I have to do is press the adjustment button firmly and pull the stock back. Then I have to unscrew the three screws holding the base of the stock guide, after which I can remove it. The next step is to unscrew the screw in the stock guide and pull it out. 
Before I pull the wiring, I must first pull the fuse out. I pull the wiring and remove the sling mount. To get to the motor, I just have to knock out two pins holding the base of the pistol grip, after which I can pull it off. I unplug the connectors and I can pull the motor out. It is a high torque EVO 1 35000 RPM motor. Despite the high torque in the name, its magnets are not very strong. Additionally, during my tests, I noticed that it heats up quite fast. Now I can unscrew two screws holding the pistol grip and the remove hole grip. Another element that I have to remove is the magazine catch on both sides. Just unscrew one screw and pull out the components out. To pull out the lower part of the gearbox shell, you need to put the selector in the semi position and push the shell upwards. The first element we will look at is the spring release function. When we set the selector further than safe, then the selector plate moves the lever from anti-reversal, which causes it to be pulled away from bevel gear so that the system can spin in the other direction and thus the spring is released. To be honest, the gears could be shimmed better. The whole system has a lot of play, but the gears turn without unnecessary resistance. To get to the inside of the shell, first I have to remove the selector gears. Then I unscrewed the four screws holding the shell halves. And I removed the shell half. As you can see, there is a lot of grease in the right places. The bushing themselves are 8mm in diameter. After unscrewing the two screws holding the top plate of the SSS fluid circuit, I can pull it off. The whole system functions on micro switches. One is responsible for the operation of the trigger, another for cycle detection, and the last one for detecting the selector position. The gears are in standard 18 to 1 ratio. The selector gear has a delayer installed. Along with the spur gear, there are in standard sintered gears. The bevel gear has four anti-reverse notches and together with the pinion gear are made with the MIM technology or metal injection molding, which is supposed to give them greater durability, but we'll find out about that in time. It's time for the upper shell part containing the pneumatics. I start by removing the dummy bolt. Then I pull out the main spring. The spring guide is steel and has a bearing and the spring itself has an irregular coil pitch. Now I can unscrew the four screws holding the halves of the frame. The halves are set very snugly and I had a little problem to separate them. This is how the electronic blowback works. The retracting piston grabs the protrusion with its tap and pulls it back. If you want to use this feature you will need a dedicated piston. The cylinder window does not have rounded corners, which is a pity. The tappet plate is made of quite flexible plastic. Mounted in the replica is a brass zero-type cylinder. Master mod cylinder head is made of aluminium. It has two ceiling o-rings, a large contoured bumper and an additional bumper on the front, which stabilizes its position in the shell and should reduce stress on the shell. The polymer piston has a full metal leaf and a mounted aluminium piston head with a bearing. The head is molded under the cylinder head and has one large o-ring and eight vent holes. As you can see, the heads fit perfectly. The 21mm long aluminium master mods nozzle has one o-ring. The system seals practically immediately and there is no problem to pass the leak test both on the inserted nozzle as well as fully extended. With the nozzle extended, the clearance between it and the cylinder head is barely noticeable. It is worth remembering that the master mods part are available in the S3 version of the replica. As a person who practically immediately changes the pneumatics in his replicas, here I do not see such a need. Ok, time for a chrono and shooting test. I chrono the replica of course before disassembling it and I do it with a hop-up set for a given weight of the BBs. On Titan 11.1V 3000mAh battery. On 0.28 gram BBs, average result is 1.95 joules or 388.3 fps. The spread between shots was 0.08 joules or 7.6 fps. The rate of fire is almost 20 BBs per second. With 0.32 gram BBs, the average result drops to 1.79 joules or 347.2 fps, while the spread between the shots was 0.05 joules or 4.7 fps. 
The last test on 0.36 gram BBs yielded a result of 1.73 joules or 322.5 fps, while the spread was 0.06 joules or 5 fps. ICRS reports the performance of the replica in the vicinity of 394 fps on 0.20 gram BBs, which gives 1.44 joules. So, as you can see, we get much more than is promised. Time for shooting test. I start them at standard on 0.28 gram BBs. 30 meters, of course, is no problem at all, and all shots went to the target both on semi and auto. At 40 meters, the situation was very similar, but a few BBs were blown away by a light wind from the right side. From 50 meters, the press spread increased, but hitting the target was not a big problem. The shots at 60 meters were characterized by more spread, but most of them hit the target as well. With such power, I decided to test 0.32 gram BBs as well, but I limited myself to the test at 60 meters, and in this case the accuracy increased significantly. The hop-up can handle such BBs and speeds them quite well both on semi and auto. The case is similar when using 0.36 gram BBs. The half pop has no problem with spinning them up and I have even the impression that they can fly even further, but unfortunately I have no place to check this. Hitting the target from such a distance is not a problem and the grouping is quite good. I also had the opportunity to test a replica in combat conditions at two games, and it performed very well. On 0.32 gram BBs I had an advantageous range compared to other players, which I used more than once to my advantage. The replica from game to game gave the impression of being more accurate, perhaps the backing has set in and it gives a more even spin. In most cases a few shots were enough to take down even an opponent hiding behind a bush.
ICS CXP Mars 2 Carbine S3 is made carefully with a high quality materials. The general fit of the parts is very good and the only thing that draws attention to itself is a slight play between the body halves, which can be easily fixed when an o-ring and there is a standard plate on the stock. Ergonomics of the replica is very good, ambidextrous manipulators, narrow front and comfortable pistol grip makes it a pleasure to use no matter in which hand we hold it. The replica has a lot of useful features such as the split gearbox for easier servicing and upgrading of the replica or the SSS3 electronic system controlling its operation. Its functions such as smart trigger, pre-cocking, battery protection and diagnostic mode make it more than just a replacement for the standard contact. It is a pity that the decision was made to use micro switches, because as we know there are still mechanical elements and their durability may be limited. Not without a reason, nowadays systems based on optical sensors reign supreme. It deserves praise that the replica has a TDM plug at a standard, and the socket is included in the set if we had a battery with a different plug and wanted to change it. In addition, the stock guide in the middle of which there are no wires, together with the ergo stock available in the carbon model, gives us an incredible amount of space for the battery, which is a big plus. Inside the split gearbox you'll also find a lot of good parts, such as the pneumatic components from Master Mods, which ensures a perfect seal. I'm only surprised at the lack of rounded cylinder window, which is slowly becoming a standard. The gears with a standard gear ratio do their jobs, but they could be shimmed better. It is interesting that they are made in two technologies, we'll see how this will affect their durability. It's nice to see a high torque motor as standard, but I will say frankly that I have seen more powerful motors, and this one can be seen to be quite heavily loaded given that it heats up quickly. No less thanks to it, the trigger response is quite good and the rate of fire is sufficient in most cases. During the test on the chronograph we achieved more than the manufacturer declares, which made me quite happy. With the power on 0.32 gram BBs, the replica ranks perfectly as an assault rifle in Poland, under the limit of 1.9 joules, which translates into really good performance reaching 60 meters, and I even think that the BBs are able to fly even further. I'm not convinced about the aluminum in your barrel, I'm curious about the durability after more millage. No less in the combination with pretty good backing and master mod knob, it gives a very satisfactory accuracy and repeatability at factory parts. During the game the replica performed very well, I could rely on its range and accuracy on 0.32 gram BBs, which gave me an advantage over other players even those who have already upgraded their replicas. I will only add that I'm really positively surprised by this replica, and more specifically by its performance in stock. <clears throat> On the side where I use it I could shoot at 50 to 60 meters max and at this distance it performed very well, and I have nothing particularly to complain about it in this regard. Of course, it's not a perfect replica. The factory shimmint could be better, as well as the motor, which is called high torque, but it doesn't seem like it. The play between the halves of the body may be a deal breaker for some, but I personally don't mind it at all. At most, I'll install an o-ring. I'm also not convinced about the aluminium inner barrel, but we'll see how it will perform after a longer run. So who would I recommend this replica to? First of all, to people who want to take the replica out of the box and without additional contribution enjoy a replica that can hand handle heavier BBs even 0.36 grams and will provide very good performance for a stock replica. But not only, the replica also looks great and handles very well. Personally, at this point, I don't plan to change any parts inside. The replica, in my opinion, shoots so well that I don't see a point at this moment. However, if I were to change something, I would consider just changing the inner barrel and the motor. If you perform a routine service on the replica, I would also recommend better shimming of the gears. Other than that, just enjoy the replica and its performance. That will be all for today. Let me know in the comments if you liked today's review and what do you think of the CXP Mars 2 series itself. And for now, thanks for watching and see you next time.